music on this show just keeps getting better and better. I wish I could say the same about the presenter. <laughs> Time now to move on to another world-class musician as we meet my final guest, one of the greatest ever rock guitarists and a founding member of one of the most popular bands of all time, Queen. Brian May is also an astrophysicist and, like Virginia McKenna, a keen animal rights campaigner. But it's his obsession with photography that's led to his latest book. Throughout his life, he sought out and bought stereographs, and one of his most significant discoveries was the work of Thomas Richard Williams, who in the 1850s created a series of images depicting life in a small English village. For years, the village remained unidentified. Now, together with photo historian Eleanor Vidal, Brian has done some remarkable sleuthing to uncover its identity and produced a curiosity of a book which gives a fascinating insight into village life as it was 150 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brian May. I know, you're reeling from the brilliant music, from the brilliant Virginia McKenna. Uh, I'm feeling very humble, I have to tell you. But now can you make me reel a little bit and try non-scientifically to explain what a stereograph is? Well, a stereograph really reproduces what your eyes do naturally. Uh, we, we're born with two eyes instead of one for a very good reason. We get two slightly different views of the world simultaneously and our brain puts these two views together and and takes two flat images basically to make one um, image in the round one stereoscopic three-dimensional image so it's a kind of natural 3d it's Would reproducing that, be... that you know instead of taking one photograph you take two photographs and you make sure that this photograph gets seen by this eye and that photograph gets seen by this side they're slightly different because of your slightly different point of view with the two eyes and so you get this magic effect. You suddenly, from two flat pictures, can see into a real, a seemingly real world. Now, I believe your first experience of stereoscopic vision was as a child when you were lying in bed staring at the wallpaper in your bedroom. And, and your second involved Weetabix. Now, there were a lot right. of hallucinogenic drugs around yes. at that time. <laughs> Weetabix Is was the something? one that did it for me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Would you like to elaborate and yes. not incriminate yourself at the no. same time? <laughs> no, I didn't do the drugs. Um, the Weetabix, when I was a kid, you used to get little cards in Weetabix given away free between the, the inner wrapper and the outer wrapper. And for, at first sight, they're just a little flat card with two pictures which look the same on, and it would be a picture of a line in a zoo or a plane or a car or something. But you send away your one and sixpence for the viewer and you pop it in the viewer and suddenly it springs to life and it seems like you could walk into that picture and touch the animal or touch the whatever it was in there. And I was entranced. I was like I was just entranced by that music, I've got to say. Oh, I'm still recovering, actually, from <laughs> Tumani's music. Um, it took you... You then decided later, when you were in, in a position to be able to start collecting things, mm. you started collecting uh, the pictures of Thomas Williams, but you didn't know... Uh, the identity of the village. You had no idea what it was, really, actually, that you were collecting, apart from his That's work. That's right. It was, I think I started off a little bit like the sort of cigarette, cigarette card collecting of, of your youth. You know, I'd seen one and I wanted to see the rest of them. I wanted to have the whole <clears throat> series in my hands. I still don't actually have the whole series. It's amazing. They're very, very difficult to find. Oh, I thought... So this is 59... Fi well, there are 59 in the mm. series, but luckily I know a couple of other collectors who have the cards that I don't have, and they allowed me to scan their holdings. So this is the first complete collection of the 59 views ever in the world, really, and as then far you, as I know. And then you've not only collected all the pictures and put them together in what really is an extraordinary book. I was look, looking at the pictures last night, and it, it does feel like you've been sort of hurled back in time 150 years. But mm. in order to be hurled back in time, you have to use... We probably don't have time for a full demonstration, but this stereo... Stereoscope. Which, which was already invented, but you've invented a particular kind of one. I developed a, a kind which could be flattened and put into the book. In fact, you can't really buy stereoscopes very easily these days, but the, you, now you can. This is an owl, which is my particular invention. It's made in Sunbury upon Thames, completely made in England. Uh, injection moulded, but this is my design. And the trick of it is that it, it can focus, so it works for anybody's eyes. And what you do is put this on a stereoscopic picture in the book and bring your eyes to it and focus. And um, it springs to life. It's magic. And I, I love watching people use this for the first time because they go, oh, 
it really works. I really feel like I can walk in and touch these people in, in the book. And they're real people from the 1850s, of course. They're not actors. They are real it, people going It's also a real village that you it's found. Village, yes. Do you want to tell me how you found it and, and also how it now compares? Well, to cut a long story very short, I couldn't find it for ages and I was driving around half my life thinking, where is this church? It must still be there in Oxfordshire, actually in Berkshire. Um, it turns out that it's actually in, in Oxfordshire because they moved the boundary, so that's a dirty trick they played on me. Um, <laughs> but what I did was, after searching fruitlessly for so many years, I suddenly thought, with the advent of the internet, somebody out there must know this church. Somebody lives in this village, if the village still exists. Uh, luckily, it wasn't Slough. Um, <laughs> that would have been very <laughs> disappointing. Yeah, so I put the picture of the... Of the um, church up on the internet and within 36 hours I had six replies from people saying they knew where it was. They said it's the, the church of St Margaret of Antioch in Hinton Waldrist in Oxfordshire. Three of them were Italians who had never been to England. <laughs> they actually found it on the internet themselves. So I got in my car and drove down there, got out and there was this church which I'd been looking at for probably 35 years and wondering if it still existed. It felt amazing. It was great, very thrilling. And Elena, my co-author, and I have been back there many times and we indulge in the, acti the activities of the village. Um, the principal activity is actually gossiping, <laughs> as you will find in the book. So nothing's changed in 150 years. They're delightful people and they were astounded to find that this amazing document had been made of their village and their ancestors in the 1850s. Yesterday we were talking to Louis de Bernier and he's got a, a new book of stories all hinging around village life from his childhood mm. uh, and in a way I he felt that he, he'd written it to, to preserve this, this kind of way of life, or preserve our memory of it, and preserve the memory of, of these people, these extraordinary people. Mm. And I wondered if, in a way, this book was also a sort of testament to times <laughs> past and, and a way of giving us a window to that time. As definitely. Well. I, we definitely think T.R. Williams spent a lot of his childhood in the village and felt it was a kind of idyll which was disappearing. So he's kind of immortalising his way of life as a child and the people in it and their way of life and their thoughts and their view on the world, their attitude to God and to the land and to nature. It's a very profound piece of work, I think, and it's unique. There isn't really another thing like this in the world, encapsulating a moment in time. You're now a, a, a sort of paid-up member of the rockocracy. There's a, there's a musical in the West End about your band and, and, and very much, I suppose, in a way, a, 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 an establishment figure. And I think it's very easy for people to forget mm. how subversive <laughs> Queen were when they first started. I mean, first of all, the, the, the name of the band. Secondly, the extraordinary frontman that you had, this Parsi who lived in Zanzibar and India who was gay who was I mean it really mm. was you were a radical group I mean, how do you think looking back now in hindsight at those times with the benefit of hindsight? It's a very big question I know. <laughs> my life has changed so much I love looking back and I, it almost looks like another person when I see myself playing all those years ago I'm very proud of what we did it was a very powerful group that we had because we interacted in a kind of competitive way really but always searching for something new and something more perfect something more exciting more dangerous uh, so I feel very proud but my life has really taken me in other directions in, back into astronomy into stereoscopic photography and and really back to animals which is something I always wanted to do and I'm, I have to say I'm sort of here kind of promoting the book and we're talking about this book but my mind is already with Virginia McKenna, you know, that's really what I want to talk about now. I want to talk about well, saving these animals. you can keep your mind with her. We can talk about it later. And she'll be really. back in a moment and you'll be sitting right next to her. Well, it's, Ladies and it's gentlemen, such a privilege. Brian May. Thank you.